We haven't seen an Izzet. Oh, Ooh, we have a Boros and Boros Golgari. Golgari. So we have not seen Izzet or Celestia all day. Whoo! All right. All right. So Boros Golgari, definitely the the favorites here that have we've been seeing. Uh, Demir, we saw one of. Okay, so this is our final round, correct? This, I believe this is the final round. I'll, I'll get confirmation from Jake. And is this for the top spot? Because, I mean, Alex is 3-0, isn't he? Is that the fourth round? Yes. That's the last round. This is the last round. Yeah. Uh, yeah, is Alex is 3-0. And I'm guessing Fox is also 3-0. Because usually you pair against people with the same record. Awesome. So. All right. We're in for something here. Yeah. Let's see if the. Let's see who goes home with all the Legos. <laughs> Cause that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I got it. I, I saw what you did there. <laughs> it's never good when you feel a need to explain. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes are always funnier with an explanation, Andy. Oh, that's always, good to know. always. That's very good to know, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now does Alex do this for a reason? Why he makes little Minecraft smiley or frowny that's faces? That's a sad face. Like he's just not happy? Is that what's going on here? I don't know. What's wrong? <laughs> Maybe he's making like a Qbert stage. And those are the bonus ones that you jump on at the end that take I you back down so. to the bottom. <laughs> Someone reach out to Alex, make sure he's okay. Looks like Gunther's trying to jump up the stairs. That's really good, actually. The placement there is right on it. <laughs> He's going to attack that one sitting at the top, and he'll get a coin or a mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a vine will grow out of it. Now, have we seen a proper Boros deck? No. Well, we, we saw we, Brian. We, we, saw we, saw Brian. Saw the, we saw the making of one. We saw Brian build his... It was a Boros, but it splashed for, I believe, two green cards. Okay. So, that's... Probably about as Boros as I would expect in a sealed or like or li in a limited format. Right. So um, the Golgari we've seen. David was pure Golgari. We watched Ricky play. He had pure Golgari, so just black green. Mm -hmm. um, but Boros I feel is very splashable, and even into Is it you can go Boros splash blue. So you're getting the Is it. Instance and sorceries. Okay. So, Boros to me feels like it's better with the splash. But we'll see. We'll see what Fox two together. It looks like on a mulligan. That's a bad way to start. Alex seems happy with his hand. We haven't seen it, but it's a frowny face. You know that much. <laughs> now, is this the first or second mulligan from Fox? This is the first. So he's drawing so we've six. We only got five, I thought. One, two, three. I thought it was. That does look like only five. Well, that's not good. Boros doesn't have a lot of card draw. And you don't want to start out behind against Alex, who's on a 3 0 run today. So I see three lands, two forests, and a swamp. Uh, Amara, who costs four mana. But he needs white to cast it. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's on. only got five. Well, that's a keep. That's a one-one flying worth lifelink. Well, I Into certainly appreciate you getting show this, but does that that seems to reveal a lot when you hold your hand like that for the camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex probably noticed that. <laughs> we do appreciate that, though, Fox. Thank you for helping us. <laughs> Well, it will all become clear anyway. So there's a 1-1. One, one. It is a 1-1 one, one flyer, like I said. It also has a keyword lifelink, which we talked about earlier. Pretty nice ability. Mm -hmm. Especially in multiples. On one or two creatures, not that great. But when every creature or a large amount have it, pretty good. It's called Healer's Hawk. But it went down, did not heal itself. Now we have the uh, home, the Legion Guild Mage. <clears throat> which is the Boros Guildmage. So we are looking like a pure Boros deck. So far. Uh, not quite sure what that one is. I'm going to try and see if I can find it real quick. Looks like the Rock Charger. It's a 3-mana 1-3 flyer 
when it attacks target attacking creature without flying gains flying so you can make its guild mage fly no oh nice and i believe that was the swarm guild mage on alex's side four rounds in i'm start finally starting to figure them out <laughs> so. so right now two two does not fare well against a one three on the fox's side so just pass through yeah, because as fast as Alex's Golgari deck was moving in the last round that we saw, this this does not look like he's keeping pace in the same way. But again, Boros, you say, was is designed to go faster, right? It's early game. Now, Fox doesn't have any Mentor cards out yet, which that's going to speed him up even more, having Mentor, because that's a 1-3 flyer. That gets Mentored quite a bit. Okay, this is direct current and deals two damage to a creature. It's also got Jump Start. So that's a dip into the is it mechanics. Okay. So he might have gone that way, but we're still Boros pure. Um, this, the direct current, Jake, if you can pull that up for me, direct current. It costs two red, one generic. It's an instant speed, deal two damage to any target. Uh, it's gotten a lot of flack because for two damage, the normal going rate was one red. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a sorcery even. There's a card called Shock. It's one red, instant speed, deal two damage to any target. Mm -hmm. This is direct current. Two red, one generic, sorcery speed, deal two damage to any one target. Much worse rate than Shock. Mm. So a lot of people have not been a fan of that card, but it has Jump Start, which lets you recast it later. Mm, okay. But for that cost, does that help with timing, or is it just another, like, okay, here it is again? Is Remember, deal? when Alex was in here, he was talking about spending resources. He kept asking RJ how many cards in your hand. Because cards in hand represent combat, represent spells and resources. Mm -hmm. Jumpstart is a card in your graveyard that you can bring back, so you can cast it again. So even though it's not in his hand, it's still something that Alex has to be aware of. It's a spell that's there that's able to come back. So it looks like the uh, Conclave Guild Mage, but Boros just keeps swinging, or Fox keeps swinging in for three. With the uh, flying out, it's not able to deal with flying. It looks like Alex is <coughs> surveilling. Yeah, decided to keep the Guild Mage. Fox, tell Fox to turn his <laughs> note 90 degrees. But yeah, Fox's mom, shout out from your son. Hi, uh, hey, mom. I appreciate you giving him a hard time about the Dead Eye Navigators. <laughs> it seems to have sunk in. So, good kid you got there. All right, so this is a swing from Alex for looks like five. Now, to do these effects that are up on Legion Guild Mage, that's what it costs any time you want to tap it and make one of those effects happen, right? Yes. Okay. okay. So, the bottom one on this, and all of the Guild Mages are the same cycle. There's one that's not expensive and one that is expensive. Gotcha. So, for this one, the three mana tap another creature, that's the one he's most commonly going to be doing. Mm -hmm. But then, late game, because at the end of the game... Once the board's really built up and clogged up and there's a lot going on, just a 2 mana 2-2 two, two sucks. Yeah. But because you can still tap it to deal 3 damage to your opponent, that's that's a worthwhile That cuts through game. everything. That's Yeah, okay. Okay. So, Alex, we have the 2-2 two, two Death Touch Gorgon, and we also have a Whisper Agent, which is what he flashed in on Fox's end turn, was able to surveil, and that is a 3-2 with Flash. So he's able to attack for five on the ground while Fox is attacking for three in the air right now. So Alex turning the game around, we can see the life totals are evened up now. And there's the Conclave Guild Mage, which is uh, another 2-2. Two -two. And uh, let's see if I can find what that one does. Each Guild Mage has two abilities, which are both... There we go. Thank you, Jake. So the cheap one, he can give trample to all his creatures. More expensive, he can make more tokens to clog up the board. Gotcha. And we have not seen a 2-2 Elf Knight token yet today. So <coughs> maybe we'll finally get to see one of those. <laughs> okay, so this card, he gets to put a 1-1 counter on each of two. Oh, no, he gets to make two 1-1 soldiers. 
and those of course have lifelink. So clogging up the board very well. Right now none of Alex's creatures have flying. Now, Fox still has one white mana up. We saw Righteous Blow being cast earlier. It's an instant for one white deal two damage to an attacking or blocking creature. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there comes a Harpooner, Harpooner who can actually do something against the flying. Yep. There it, we go. It fought the 1-3. 3-2 uh, three, against the 1-3. The Harpooner wins. And we got Ben joining us back in the booth. <laughs> Why, hello, friends. Welcome back, Ben. Sneaking in like an elephant. What's up, man? I may or may not have attacked Hazmat here with a door. I think Hazmat won that fight, though. <laughs> apologize to my foot. Stupid door. <laughs> no, no, you apologize to my door. The red is door. All right, so we're seeing a double block to, on the 3-2. So Fox takes two damage from the Gorgon, but he gains two life, so it's neutral. Okay. Going into this round, Alex was very worried about this match. It seems like Fox is just straight Boros. Yeah, he is. Um, he got built off to for a, speed, built for damage. Got yeah. off to a bit of, bit of a slow start for a Boros deck, but we're seeing the I jump mean, start. Now I believe he had to discard. Yeah, he's gonna discard there. Okay, so I'm trying to see what he discarded. That looks like he discarded a. Uh, Comatronic Wave, which deals one damage to each creature your opponent's control, and creatures your opponent's control can't block. I like that card. That's a very good way to push your army through. Yeah. So it looks like Alice is going to swing back. On this one, I think I block and kill the Guild Mage. If I'm going to block either of these creatures, because both of Alex's are 2-2s, two Fox yeah. has a 2-2 two -two able to block. I think I block the Guild Mage because that can pump out Night Tokens. Yeah. But I think I, if I'm Alex here, I just make a knight token. Yeah, no sense putting the guild mage yeah. in the fight. Yeah, just make a knight token. Don't even swing this turn, and start swinging next turn. And he's got the gateway. Yeah. yeah. Nope, he doesn't. Yeah, I would have done the token also, unless he's trying to feed his Golgari. Although that's Amara coming out. Yeah, that's a good one. And, and Alex uh, was just waiting for an opportunity. So he was just clearing the board. Yeah. Fox hitting the land here is not good. Because Fox most likely would not have traded with the Gorgon. Nope. nope, not seeing what's coming up. Yep. So, so Amaro puts Alex on Soldier. Pulls ahead. Yeah. Oh! We got a split card. Uh, actually, me and Fox are talking about that. I believe... <clears throat> oh, I've got it. That's uh, Response integrity. and Resurgence. It's not Integrity Intervention? No, it's Response and Resurgence. He used it to kill the Amara. Looks like I have been beckoned. I shall return. Very All right. well. Looks like a judge question is getting banned from us. Be judging. So. All right, so he used the response version to deal five damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Cost two mana. And that took out his heavy hitter, yeah? That took out Imara, which was going to keep pumping out more soldiers for Alex every right. time it attacked. So yeah, that was the worst, worst one that was on the board for Fox. So... Fox able to produce a blocker, Ooh, but Alex answered it. That's the, yeah. Oh, there you go. The luminous right. bonds. That's his. That uh, just negates the card for. Yeah. Okay. So Alex with the board presence, Fox trying to fight back, build wow. up his own presence, and Alex just negates it. So strong showing from the Golgari. Uh, Boros. That was a much slower than I expected start, which is sad because it started on turn two. <laughs> so Boros, you want to turn one play now. Mulligan to five makes that whole game difficult for him. Right. Because he's already down two cards to Alex's seven, and he's not going to catch up with the red deck, red white Boros deck. Yeah. So, key for him is not Mulligan to five <laughs> and get an early threat followed up with a mentor creature. Because that's how he's going to outrace Alex's board presence. So, we'll see if he's able to do it. Oh, all right. I'm so. just now seeing Rocketeer, Aloha Rocketeer streaming Spider-Man over on his. So uh, this is our last round. Maybe after this, there's a new a new Spider-Man video game. It, been it, look, it about. looks it looks super fun. It looks awesome, and I know because of its success now, Marvel's already announced that they're going to keep doing 
they're going to branch into other superhero video games. Nice. So it's nice when something does well because then it gives them an opportunity to really mess something up so, <laughs> and screw the whole thing over. I've really enjoyed a lot of the Spider-Man games. I know a lot of them have been kind of junk, but there have been some really good ones. There have. There's also been some junk. Oh, ones. yeah. You know what actually also looks really good? What's that? The new um, Tomb Raider game. It actually is, it like, I don't know if it's great, to play, but I've seen a lot of people streaming it and whatnot, and it's just, it is a beautiful looking game. Does it look better than the new Tomb Raider movie? Anything looks better. Than, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, it, it looks it looks like a movie in and of its own right. All right, so what do we got here? All right, so we're looking at Alex. He's doing a substitution. In between games, you're allowed to sideboard. Uh-huh. So he took out his Conclave Guildmage. He's bringing in uh, the Gruesome Menagerie, which is uh, Jake the Tech Guy's one of his favorite cards in the set. Um, if you can pull that up on screen for us, Jake. It's a card that allows you to use your resources early in the game, your creatures, to block and protect your life total, maybe kill some of your opponent's creatures, and then you get them right Because he doesn't want to bank on a Boros deck that doesn't start until turn two again. Right. Boros, gotcha. he's probably going to get faster threats and All more right. threats. So this way, Alice can get them back from the graveyard. And the nice thing is it puts them directly onto the battlefield. Yeah, that gruesome menagerie is very strong, very powerful magic card. Most uh, magic cards in in the history of magic that get creatures out of your graveyard, put them to your hand. Yes, or they'll get one back. Yeah. This one, you're up to three creatures from your graveyard in the yeah. battlefield. Pretty strong effect. And yeah, definitely yeah. definitely a good plan against Boros. Boros is going to be killing stuff. And a little bit more of a hedge case, but <coughs> Gruesome Menagerie does not target the cards in your graveyard. So oh, you're like, choosing. Yes, things like Ground Seal aren't going to stop your opponent from getting things back. Not a lot of cards that no. mess with your graveyard, but there are a few. Yeah, and there's only a couple that just stop them from being targeted. But nice. it is a distinction to note. If you'll notice, the Morse code that Alex is tapping out says... I'm not kidding. <laughs> he just, he's got a now weird... he's getting a better tap surface. <laughs> this he's, is uh, uh, his ASMR stream. He's talking... He's, he's talking trash to Hazmat here. He's talking he's, very emphatically. Yeah. yeah. Wow, he's wow. slamming hands he's, on the he's table. He's going full on Italian. What's happening? Speaking of talking emphatically with your hands. Bobbity boopy? <laughs> Bobbity boopy. I have a relative with a deaf brother. Okay. And our first Christmas at their house, the, their brother came over and they had an argument. <laughs> Sorry, I don't in mean sign the language. I don't mean the laugh, but I've and seen an argument. It was in sign the language. most disorienting thing because everybody's having happy Christmas talk all around the house, and these two people are just like hands flying at each other. It was bizarre to me. Yeah, I don't. I don't mean. I've never laugh. seen that. No, I'm. I'm not trying to laugh. It's just, I've never experienced that. But watching Alex slam his hands, that's <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking he's having an argument at Christmas. So, <laughs> knowing very minimal sign language. Yeah. Arguments. Arguments in sign language are. Because the expressions, the expressions are there. It's just so quiet. Yeah, it is yeah. so weird. It's just disconcerting. That's and now fresh, I'm back to the magic. Game. Fresh faced recruit. I have fe- played a fox. I have Here offended a, the country of Australia, and now I've offended deaf people. I'm <laughs> doing my job. How did what, you wait, offend what? the country Austra- of Australia? I offended the entire country of Australia with my accent. Oh, uh, you yeah. didn't know this. I, 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 no, That's why I don't do accents anymore. Because <laughs> you did one Australian accent and everybody is mad at you. Well, it was a really bad accent. Fair enough. Most most people doing accents do bad accents. <laughs> All right, so we see the harpoon crawl harpoon again. Yeah, it's nothing with nobody to fight. Nothing against a two two one death uh, two and double striker. I believe the recruit. No, yeah. it's a one one. Is it a one one? Yeah, just a one one because it's there to get mentored. And that's the cat, right? It's a 2-1. That is the something stray? It's fresh generous recruit, stray. 2-1. As long as it's your turn, it has first strike. Are you sure? Yes, 100%. Okay. 2-1 has first strike. You are absolutely correct. Ooh, here we go. Generous stray is on the battlefield. It's a 1-2. Draws a card when it dies. Fox played the uh, Swarm Companions. We now have two 1-1 lifelinkers. Generous stray. 
Draw a card. Blocks there you go. Jake drawing a card when it enters the battlefield. Thank you. Clarify it for me. Fox just threw those tokens right in front of the Crawl Harpooner. No, well, he doesn't like the Crawl Harpooner because Jake Fox does have some flyers. Yeah, and I, I think that's a fair trade. He played three yeah. mana to gain two life and kill a creature. Yeah. And his flyers, that was what was keeping him in the game last game. That Crawl Harpooner just stops it. So there's the Plague Broker, so we're going to lose creatures. Yeah. And Alex is left with the Plague Broker. 2-2, I believe. 3-2, wow. It's like so Crafter. It's just it's significantly like better than... Fleshbag Flesh Marauder, Marauder yeah. or Merciless Executioner. It's just strictly better. Everybody goes to the Fleshbag Marauder because it's more fun to say. Don't forget the Merciless Recruiter, Executioner. I never do. I prefer yeah. the Merciless Executioner because I have more copies of it. It's, it's the same thing as a Fleshbag Marauder. Yeah, they're, they're uh, uh, effectually... The different types. Part. Different creature types, but that's it. Are you looking up that white creature? I sure am. I'm looking up that white creature. I got it, I got it, I got, got it. it. Skyline Scout. It is a 2 mana 2-1. Two, Whenever it attacks, you may pay 2. If you do, it gains flying until end of turn. I think you're wrong, Andy. I don't. I think you're wrong. I think it's uh, this card called... Skyline Scout that was just brought up. Uh, I mean, it might be Skyline Scout. <laughs> yeah. But I think you're wrong, Andy. I think it's Skyline Scout. Darn, I hate being wrong. Sometimes an angel passes by and gives me a little nod. Like, hey, you're a daring one. That always makes my day. That's some good flavor text right there. That is a good one. <laughs> Alright, Luminous Bonds taking care of the uh, silent, or skeleton, spinal, the spinal centipede. centipede. Yeah, man, eventually we got there. <laughs> Luminous Bonds is a strong card. Very good and limited. Mm -hmm. Alex with his locket. Yep. Yeah. Not what he wants to be doing now, but that's yeah. card draw. Yeah. So attack for three. <laughs> We're seeing another game where, like, I feel like Boros is moving, but he's not moving. He's as not fast definitely not as moving want. as fast as he'd like to be. Yeah. Yeah, Boros deck, you want to be going faster than this. Now, I believe that might be a mentor creature. I believe you are correct, sir. Which we haven't seen out of Fox yet. Is That's... that a barging sergeant? Um, no, you only paid three mana. And that, be a no, five that's drop. not a barging. Yeah. Can't be a five drop. Wojek bodyguard. So, Wojek bodyguard? Okay. Yeah, it looks like it. Wojek bodyguard. All right. So 3-3, three, three, Mentor can attack or block a look for 3 mana. Uh, Alex playing is a Swarm Guild Mage. I think that's the Undercity Uprising. Undercity Uprising, giving Death Touch and fighting. Yeah. So even with the Luminous Bonds, he is able to fight. Swarm Guild Mage. Swarm Guild Mage put up that. That's the last creature on the board for Alex. Is it the. I'm not sure what that is on Fox's side. I'm not sure what creature. Skyline is. Scout, Andy. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> There's a Skyline Scout. <laughs> Matt, you are taking to this like a fish to water. Well, so. man, I just. Thanks for the great you teaching. Are on it. It. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you that because it looks like it might be a hybrid. I'm not sure. Anthony, do you know what that creature is? Because Jake doesn't want to tell us. He tells us everything the second we're about to name it, but no, he won't show rock us what this is. Did he tap three for it or two? Two. Okay. Then it's not a rock charger because that costs three mana. Oh. Hey, it could be a Skyline Scout. I'm. We're. Until Jake proves us otherwise, it is a Skyline Scout. Oh, it's a 10th District Guard. No, it is a hybrid. It is Vernati Shieldmate. Oh, okay. 2-2. Two, two. Well, I was wrong. That's what was throwing me off, because I'm like, well, it kind of looks hybrid. Yeah, it doesn't look, quite look white. No. Yeah, I couldn't tell. My 
my eyes aren't what they used to be. So even though it's a green-ish card, I would still say it falls into the Boros deck. For sure. So I'm still not splashing him into another color because no. he's able to pay it not with just all. white. Yeah. And that's a pretty boros -y card. I'm fairly certain Boros had yeah. an, an effective <laughs> reprint of that card previously. Now the fact that that is a 2-mana Human Soldier 2-2 two -two Vigilance... But it is human, even though it's green. It makes me wonder why they made two two elf knight tokens, and not just two two knight vigilance. Well, I can tell you, it comes to do with lore. Does it? Yes. Uh, Celestia soldiers can be anybody. Ben, wait, wait, Ben, fill me with your lore, please. All right, I will fill Ew. you right up. Andy. So Ew. in Celestia, anybody can be a soldier: humans, orcs, elves, okay. goblins, anything like that. But so far, only elves have ever been knighted by the Celestia. Really? Yes. See, I, that is 100% a lore reason, and yeah. I did not know that. So, Celestia are discriminatory against non-elves. Potentially. Those jerks. Just like the Lorwyn I mean, elves. They're led by Tristani, who is a dryad. That's just um, like Lorwyn elves. They think they're better than everybody else. They're okay. not. They were mm -hmm. the best elves. No, they weren't. Find me more powerful elves. I'm the back to the game, Ben. <laughs> the ones that appeared in Lorwyn. I'm back on the game. So when you're wrong, you go back to the game, huh? Glint, uh, Glint, what's the Winnower? Guiltleaf Winnower? Yes. Yeah, the Guiltleaf are the elves of Lorwyn. Guiltleaf Winnower, what's that? Origins. Thank you. But it's an elf from Rest Lorwyn. my case, rest my case. <laughs> Nerds. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You're right here with us, talking about magic cards. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, but we were talking about Predator earlier. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, here we go. All right, is that the... It's not the book one. That might... Ooh, I don't know. That is a different red guy. Costs him four <laughs> manias. Uh, hey, I'll tell you what it's not. It's not a Skyline Scout. I'll tell you what it's not. But it's there not is on my, one there. It's not on my picture. Oh, no, it is. It is a Goblin Crater Maker. Ah, okay. Cost him two mana, one sacrifice. We open one of these on our box opening. Yep. Uh, one in sacrifice, he can deal two damage to target creature. I don't think there's going to be a lot of colorless stuff. So, but that is an option, two damage to a creature. So there's the block. Is it a 3-3? Three, three? I already put my, put my <laughs> phone down. <laughs> Sorry. It is a 2-2. Two, two. Good showing from both sides to just drag it out, just melt each other. They're these. both hanging in there, yeah. yeah. Now, it looks like Fox might have taken the edge. He Ooh, just played Sky Knight oh, Legionnaire. Wait, no, no. Sky, Sky Knight Legionnaire, 2 2 flying haste. Yeah. So, I like that card. It's also a human, by the way. Yes, it is. Yeah. Not a knight, though. No. No, because it's only a human. That's right. It's also in Boros, so they don't have a whole lot of knights. Well, they're more soldiers. They got a bunch of soldiers. They're the Legion. Yeah. You, you don't make you don't make knights sleep in the garrison. No, they That's generally have their own manners, <laughs> yeah. estates. Yeah, in the Elfheim. Now, only if you're a Silesian elf. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a counterattack for Alex. Let's get through. <laughs> All right, that's the undergrowth gets a counter for each creature in the graveyard. Two, three, four, five, six, five creatures. So I believe that's a eight, eight. It's either eight or seven, seven. I don't know, but it's not flying, and that's what Fox is worried about. As long as it's not flying, Fox is okay. There's the the Legion Guild Mage. Attack for four it's in the a air. It's a Lurcher. It's actually a 7-7. Seven, seven. Seven, I said a 7-7 seven, seven or 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, you did. I, I gave myself an out. This isn't like Jake. I didn't have to back. be 100%. Alex activated the Swarm Guild Mage for something. He gained two life. Okay. That's still... I mean, do it because he had the mana, but it's still a one-turn clock. Of course, now if he can deal with either of those flyers. Yeah, he's fine. 
he can also activate it one more time. So he's at an effective six life as long yeah. as he has on tap land. Yeah. And he doesn't go to swing with the guild mage. So he's, uh, he's going to give him menace. all plus one plus zero and menace. Mm -hmm. The problem is, so the guild mage, if you can pull up the swarm guild mage for us, Jake. Uh, the problem is he can give menace to both of his creatures. But Fox is able to block the one of them. One. Yeah. And will survive. So this expensive ability gives menace. <laughs> but not both will get through and Fox will survive. And then counterattack for four and kill for Alex. Looks like Alex is going to do it anyway. Yeah. Now he was hesitant because now he is given away the opportunity to gain two life and go up to six. So he's definitely taking four damage from Fox yep. on, the, on the crackback. So he's tapping three. If he can deal with the flyers, he's okay. Yeah. Or gain the life. I saw a severed strands hiding out in his hand. There you go. So he has to sacrifice something. Yeah, he's going to gain uh, seven life. Now, what is that green one in the middle that has been doing so much work that for him? That green creature? Yeah. That's the one you can spend five to pump it. Plus two, plus two. Devkarin Dissident. Thank you, Anthony. It's a two, two, cost five, and he can make it plus two, plus two. That guy's been doing a lot of work. It's been getting through every time. And it's not getting through anymore. <laughs> now Alex though is up to eleven. Well, he's, Nine. he's knocked back down a little bit. Yeah. That was a good play by Alex to bounce back there. Oh, there we go. Here he comes the gruesome that. menagerie. Yep. Exactly what he put it in there for. Exactly what Fox didn't want to see. You check CMC of the creatures, right? Not power. CMC. Okay. Which stands for, Matt? Any idea? CMC Music Factory. That's right. All right. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I can't remember the song, but yeah, no. Converted mana cost. Ah. The problem so, here, though, Alex has a lot of two drops in his graveyard. Well, if he even gets anything back with flying, like that pitiful, uh, the harpoon, crawl harpoon has reach. Yeah. That that's all he needs to do. Yeah, the reach is perfect. Yep. There you go. Just deal with the threat on Fox's side. <laughs> I'm not really sure what's happening here though, because uh, that skyline. The plague broker. Oh, he got back the plague broker as well. Gotcha. So he didn't even fight. He just used plague broker to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fight would have cost him the, the crawl harpoon. Wow, that's a pretty good bounce back. This is just like what he was saying earlier, too. If your best play is to go down to one and then come back. Yep. Oh, that still looks like a big red spell. But it looks that's like the, I think it does five damage six, to a creature. Six damage to a player. Oh, to a player. Okay. And I'm going to assume Fox targeted himself. That cost me my one loss. Six damage to any target. Can't be countered. Yeah. So Fox was super close. Yeah. That Menagerie just took him out yeah. of it, though. That was a good one. Yep. Strong game. Well, Mom, Mom, Fox did pretty good. Yeah, he did. He put up a good fight. Uh, he just got out, good game. outvalued. He got out Golgari. Yep. Golgari did what Golgari does.